Hi, this is the video for Daf Membet uh, of Masechet Sukkah. Uh, the, the Daf began with the Mishnah, uh, of, part of the Mishnah of the Rebbe Yossi. Where Rebbe Yossi says, um, Yom Tov Rishon Shel Chag, Shechal Yod B'Shabbat. Right, the first day of uh, Sukkot that falls on Shabbat. V'Shachach V'Hotzi Et Arura L'Rashut Arabim, and he forgot that it's forbidden to carry on Shabbat in the Rashut Arabim in the public domain, um, and he took his lulav out into the public domain. Pator Mipnei Shehotzi O Berashut. Right, he's exempt from the normal penalty he would incur for carrying on Shabbat because he took it out with permission. And in our Gemara, Abaye says, Lo shanu ele shelo yatsabo. That refers to only a case where he didn't yet fulfill his commandment with the lulav. But ayatsabo chayav. But if he already fulfilled his commandment, then he is uh, uh, liable for carrying it out into the Rashid Rabin. In other words, according to Abaye, the Amora Abaye, um, if you already fulfilled your commandment, then you shouldn't be using your lulav anymore during the day. You shouldn't be carrying it. And if you take it out, then you're chayav, you're obligated for transgressing the laws of Shabbat. But if you haven't, the mission only refers to a case where you haven't yet um, carried, you haven't yet fulfilled your mitzvah with your lulav. Now, as Moshe Benowitz points out in that parish I spoke about last week, this is a, a, a pretty big difficulty. Rabbi's uh, explanation is not so easy. The Mishnah says he took it out bereshut with permission. Now, if he had permission to carry out the lulav, then why say it's only if he forgot and took it out? Shechach. As Rabbi Yossi says, Shechach Lotzi. He had permission to take it out. Why do I have to say that he's exempt from uh, transgressing on Shabbat only if he forgot? If he has permission to take it out, then he has permission to take it out. Even Lechachira, even um, from the get go, he should be allowed to take it out on Shabbat. Um, and if uh, it wasn't permitted, Lechachira, Ab Anishio, to take out the Lulav, then he had no permission. So how can you say he took it out with permission? He never had any permission. So this is a pretty big difficulty interpreting the Mishnah. Um, and uh, pay, uh, the parish that Benovich offers is based on the Tosefta, where Rabbi Yossi says, Yom Tov Rishon Shachag Shachal Yod B'Shabbat. Again, the first day of Sukkot that falls on Shabbat. Kevan Since he already fulfilled his obligation, asur It's forbidden for him to carry it anymore. And so what he points out is that the case of he forgot and took his lulav out because um, um, to the to the public domain, that's only after he fulfilled his obligation. And again. What Benovich points out is the way that you fulfill your obligation on the first day is you go and you harvest it. This is the original, earlier meaning of, uh, of not exactly how we fulfill it today, but the earlier meaning of the lulav is you would go and you would harvest it that day. You would bring it either to the Beit Knesset or to the Beit HaMikdash, to the temple. You would then fulfill your mitzvah with it, and you shouldn't then be carrying it on Shabbat in the Rashut HaRabim, into the public domain. But it's not the case where as soon as you pick it up, which is the problem in the Bible, as soon as you pick it up, you've now fulfilled your mitzvah. You haven't really fulfilled your mitzvah until you bring it somewhere, you harvest it, cut it down, bring it somewhere, and then walk around with it. If you've already done that, and then you continue to carry it around, then you've transgressed uh, your Shabbat by carrying it outside. But before then, uh, originally speaking, uh, you were allowed to carry it in the Rashid Rabim to get it from the place you harvested it to either the Beit HaMikdash or the Beit HaKnesset. Again, as I did last time, I want to emphasize, this is not exactly how we do things today. I'm talking about a reconstruction of the Mishnah, of the Tanaitic, and the early understanding of the Mitzvah of the Sukkah. These things changed in the Bavli, and our ways of behaving are patterned after the later Halakha that developed through the later Tanitic period and the Amoraic period in Babylonia and in Eretz Israel.